Yeah. Somebody said I was too loud. Am I too loud? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can hear me in Massachusetts anyway, so. Once the word liberty came out of my mouth, they stopped listening. Our next speaker, let's hold up some of those signs. I see the white flag. Hold up that white flag for a second, really high. Now, the last time I was here, and this is not a protest, ladies and gentlemen, this is exercising our First Amendment rights to protect our Second Amendment rights. The last time I was here, I was here for the right to work bill. And there were about 20 of us standing right where that guy is with that flag. 20 of us who supported that bill. We were surrounded by 5,000 union members. <laughs> Many of you remember that. And for those of you who remember Jerry DeLemus, Jerry DeLemus has this telescoping flag. And it went 40 feet up in the air. And so every picture from the right to work was Jerry DeLemus holding that flag. And that flag is right over there. What's that flag say, sir? Come and take it. I see three or four of those. Good job. You know the other thing I really enjoy, I look around. This is probably, without a doubt, the safest place in New Hampshire right now. <laughs> Isn't that great? And to our legislators who would like to suspend these rights they believe are flexible or open to interpretation or from a living document, look around to the women who are holding on to their guns. This is not just a man's issue. It is a family issue. And sometimes we need to be reminded here, for those who are, of us who were bred and raised in New Hampshire, and for those of us who were wise enough to move to New Hampshire, or our parents were smart enough to bring us here early. Sometimes we need to be reminded, for those of us who were born on the soil of the United States, what tyranny really means. That socialism isn't a polite political word. It's just tyranny light. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. And this next gentleman reinvigorated my spirit towards liberty when I first heard him speak, when I first met him. And how sad it is sometimes that we have to hearken over to those in Europe who are fleeing that chaos and coming to our shores to remind us of the liberty that was ours and is ours to inherit and is meant to be protected so we can pass it on. It takes a man from the United Kingdom to remind us of our sacred rights because those rights have already been taken away from them. From the very country that gave us a king that wanted to take our rights away from us, this man has landed on our shores with his family and we are better for it. Ladies and gentlemen, a great New Hampshire patriot hailing from the country of the United Kingdom, but hopefully soon to be joining us here as a citizen. Please give a round of applause for Mike Rogers. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, I'm British and my name is not Piers Morgan. I've been here long enough to have learned and understood the wisdom of our founders and to embrace the genius of our founding documents. But a little history. I grew up in the UK in the 50s and 60s when the populace had not been completely disarmed. A man's home was his castle. And where do you think castle doctrine comes from? A trespasser on a farm had a reasonable expectation of an, ar of an arse full of bird shot with no recourse against the farmer. The police were unarmed and the streets were mostly peaceful. It's hard to imagine that before 1903, the British had the right to bear arms for self-defense, and even harder to grasp that in less than 100 years, the last of the guns had been confiscated, except from criminals. Now the police are mostly armed, the streets are so dangerous that the government is contemplating knife bans, and oh, those farmers can't even shoot violent intruders inside the farmhouse without going to jail. <laughs> so how do you know who had the guns? Registration, of course, beginning in 1903 and so comprehensive by the late 60s that everything from AK to Zastava was on file with the government. When the noose was tightened after the Dunblane massacre, a bit like our Newtown disaster here, most people gave up their guns without protest. The rest soon got a visit from the police. 
Our founders understood history, economics, and human nature, perhaps better than any body of men have ever done. They carefully prescribed what the federal government should do, and they proscribed what it must not do, giving us the tools to watch over it, restrain it, and if necessary, replace it. That well-regulated militia, for example, meaning well-trained and prepared. George Washington said, a free people ought not to be, uh, not only be armed and disciplined, but they should also have sufficient arms and ammunition to maintain a status of independence from any who might attempt to abuse them, which would include their own government. Unlike the British, who except for the Magna Carta have an unwritten constitution, we have a set of rules which are explicitly designed to limit government and an intentionally armed populace, like the Swiss, because when the government fears the people, there is liberty. But when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. The communists in Russia knew it and disarmed the peasants. Indeed. There were articles in Pravda recently reminding us not to fall into that trap. Hitler knew it and disarmed the middle class. Mao and Pol Pot knew it too. You can bet that our progressives know it and that they know that they cannot reduce us under absolute tyranny as long as we are armed. You're here. Choose carefully. Not only your federal representation, but those all important bastions of your freedom. The state, the county, and the local officials. And a word for those listening who do not have or do not like guns. Let me paraphrase the D German pra pastor Martin Niemöller. If first they came for the gun owners and you did not speak up, there would be no one left to defend you when it was your turn. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you? <laughs> the American Revolution was sparked by the colonists fighting to preserve their rights as Englishmen against distant and tyrannical government in London. Except for the government being in DC, is that not our situation today? I stand with you in that fight. Molon Labe, they'll have to come and fight for every gun they want to take. And what, and what, and what, one more thing for the gentleman with that sign about if guns are outlawed. They can try it. it. They will not succeed. Not only because we have the Second Amendment, but because there are explicit prohibitions in the federal constitution in most states against ex post facto, facto legislation. You can't make me a criminal after the fact for something that I do legally today. Thank you. An opera singer and a man with a British accent. you think this was PBS. <laughs> Crop TV.